This is Todo, our humble Todo system built for our own company by the same name. It's powered by Laravel 4.2, and the Todo list itself is an Angular front end so that we can have a snappy UI. On the list, we can add new To Dos, edit, complete, and delete To Dos that we've already created. We can also see our coworkers' To Dos since this is a shared To Do list, but we cannot edit their To Dos unless we're an admin. Outside of directly working with To Dos, we can edit our own user. And if we're the admin, we can edit other members of the group and invite new members. Since our system isn't fully complete, the invited user won't actually get an invitation email, but it'll act like it runs the gambit on that feature. To take you on a brief walk through the system, let's start off in the routes file. Up here at the top, you can see we have some basic sign in and out routes mapping to the sessions controller, which as you can guess, will handle creating or destroying a user session when the appropriate routes are hit. Below that, we have a route group that ensures we must be authenticated prior to reaching our inner routes. Inside of here, we have our root URL mapped to our home controller's show action, and this is the to-do page that we just saw. Then below, we'll have our to-do's resource mapped to our to-do's controller, which is going to be responsible for handling all CRUD operations on the to-do list as a JSON API for the Angular front end. Peeking inside, we can see all JSON responses, and then inside of the store and update methods, we can see two form objects being created, to-do creation and to-do change. These classes hold the logic for creating a new to-do or updating an existing to-do. This is done to both separate concerns and clean up our controllers. You'll see something similar in again in a moment. At the top, we can also see a before filter on everything but the index method, which calls the authorize method in this class. At the bottom where this method is declared, we use a facade can I to ask if the current user can manage a to-do object that gets returned from the route model binding. This will be better explained in a moment. If the user is not allowed to manage this to-do, the app is going to abort with a 401 status code. Now before we hop back out to the routes file, take note that update and destroy take a to-do as an argument by default. And this will magically be the to-do that we need to work on. When we hop back out to our routes file, you'll notice a route model binding immediately below the to-dos resource. This will map any named route parameter named to-dos to the instance of to-do with the same ID, fetched from the database automatically. Since route resource will use the name of the resource as the name of the parameter, this mapping just works and it makes working with controllers much nicer. Below, we can see the same thing going on with our user's resource. Our user's controller is set up pretty similarly, but has standard HTML responses and is not accessed via AJAX. You'll also notice a view-based property at the top of the class. This is defined for use within the view method, which is defined within the base controller. The view base just makes it so we don't have to manually type out the directory structure every time we want to access a view. Rather, we just pass the view name we want into the view method and it'll inject that into our layout appropriately. We also have a current user method in here, which is just a convenient way for us to have access to our current user or the null object equivalent guest when in the controller. Back over to our users controller, you'll notice form objects inside of the store and update method as I had mentioned earlier. These contain the logic for inviting a user and for modifying an existing user, again, to isolate the logic and keep the controller clean. We won't worry about this inner logic until necessary. Switching gears a bit, let's hop over to our user model for a quick look. We can see that we have an eloquent boot method where we've bound an event listener on save that will hash the password if it has been changed or added. Then below, we can see our to-dos relation, which is a has many, and by default, we sort those chronologically by creation. The only other thing to note in here is that we've overridden our delete function to also delete all of the to-dos belonging to this user. If we hop over to our to-do model, we'll see our relation back to the user at the top, which is a belongs to. Then immediately below, we can see a scope with users, which we use inside of the to-dos controller. We'll explain this in an upcoming episode, but if you're curious now, the Layerfell Eloquent documentation covers scopes really well. In summary, a scope lets us build reusable query components. In this situation, we eagerly load users with our to-dos and sort the to-dos chronologically. Okay, so I think that's enough for an initial tour. You'll see the other important parts of the app as we work our way through the series. So considering we have the shiny new to-do list that the company loves, it stands to reason that others may want to benefit from this wonderful invention of ours. That's why we're going to slowly convert our single organization application into a multi-tenant application with as few disruptions to production as possible so we do not disrupt users who are currently on the system. We're going to go piece by piece while converting this to a multi-tenant system starting with tweaking the schema and the model layer to allow us to start adding new tenants to our single database system. Then we'll try to meet the needs of our customers who want to start customizing a few things. We're also going to look at various different ways of accessing our information, depending on the scheme we've chosen at the time. 
We'll take a look at what's needed to silo off our users' data in a safe way while still being able to grab the usage information we need as project owners. Next time, we're just going to start off by adjusting our schema and model layer to start moving towards a single database multi-tenant implementation.